Since our Gravity Falls episode last year, the show has aired another season, and naturally has sparked like a million more conspiracies. Seriously, this season has been crazy from zombies to terrifying shapeshifters to sock puppet operas, and we're finally getting answers to some of our biggest theories. So many mysteries have been solved, but now even more questions are being asked. It was way too hard to pick just one. So today, Chad and I are here to cover our favorite Gravity Falls conspiracies from season two so far. And obviously, if you haven't caught up with season two or haven't even seen Gravity Falls, we will be covering some very, very big spoilers. So take this as your warning. Now, here are our top Gravity Falls conspiracies. Rick and Morty and Gravity Falls are connected. Yes, Rick and Morty, the hilariously raunchy Adult Swim show about a Doc Brown-like grandpa, his wimpy grandkid, and their adventures across the universe. Could it be tied to Disney's Gravity Falls? Well, in the Gravity Falls episode Society of the Blind Eye, Grunkle Stan's pen, notepad, and mug get sucked into the portal. In Rick and Morty, close Rick encounters of a Rick kind. A pen, notepad, and mug fall through a portal onto another planet. And you can tell it's the same ones because of the question mark on the mug. Now, we don't know much about Stan's portal yet, but we've got a pretty good idea that it transcends our universe. Now, right now, nothing has been confirmed about a connection between either shows, and it just kind of exists as an Easter egg. But we know for sure it was intentional because both creators, Alex Hirsch and Justin Roiland, are friends. In fact, Roiland even lends his voice to the Gravity Falls character, Blendin Blandin. Will something come of this in the future? Well, who knows, but it's definitely pretty cool. Bipper has returned. If you can recall, in the season 2 episode, Sock Opera, Dipper makes a deal with Bill Cipher in exchange for the laptop's password. Rookie mistake, Dipper. Even though Dipper defeats Bill at the end of the episode, some believe that Bill still lingers in Dipper's mind. Specifically in the episode, Northwest Mansion Mystery. People think that because of the tapestry of Bill, that he might be present in the house. And they might be right. Because when Dipper is turned into wood, his pose is very similar to his final form that the shapeshifter predicts in Into the Bunker, meaning Dipper is practically dead at this point. So that is the perfect time for Bill to take over. And if you notice, Dipper kind of starts acting a little differently. Known for his slightly high-strung and paranoid personality, Dipper tells old man McGucket to just party when warning them about the end of the world in the last few minutes of the episode. Not a huge red flag, sure, but notice how he walks with his hands on his hips. Dipper only ever walked like that when Bill was possessing him. Also, in the season two mid-season finale, Not What He Seems, Dipper seems persistent on not letting Stan open the portal at the end of the episode. It's possible it might be because he didn't trust Stan, or if he was really under the influence of Bill, it could be because he didn't want Stan's brother, presumably his greatest threat, to return. And Bill would need a physical form to stop that from happening in order to not raise any suspicions. So this behind the scenes possession isn't unreasonable. In the same scene, Dipper slash Bipper tackles Stan in order to stop him from opening the portal. A very un-Dipper thing to do. On the other hand, he did lose his trust for Stan and wanted to protect Mabel, so it's not 100% out of the realm of possibility that that was uh, all Dipper. But then again, if you look at Dipper's eyes right as the portal is opening, they look a lot like they did when Bill was in charge. So there could still be a little bit of Bipper left inside of him. Stan's Tattoo Ever since the Dipper's Guide to the Unexplained short Stan's Tattoo, this topic has been a very controversial one. What is Stan's Tattoo and why is he trying so hard to cover it up? I mean, it's clearly a big deal if even Bill remembers it in Dreamscapers. In his Reddit AMA, Bill said that Stan's Tattoo means watch your step, but we all know he can't be trusted, so why should we believe this? And in fact, we just learned in the episode Tale of Two Stans that Stan's Tattoo isn't a tattoo at all. It's actually a burn scar. There's one moment in the episode Land Before Swine where you can see it from a distance, but it doesn't look like what we've seen before. But during Stan's fantasy sequence, we can see it in full view. It appears to say OLHV, which decoded in Caesar Cipher means 
lies. But this sequence is all in Stan's mind. We can't take any of this as true. So there goes that idea. Now we know that the symbol is the same one engraved on the side of the console. Some think it could be some sort of map to Gravity Falls. But a more likely explanation is that it's actually an alchemical sigil, or an alchemy equation. Douglas Mackerel, a major Gravity Falls fan, made a video decoding all of Stan's tattoos. And here's what he figured out. The circle on top symbolizes power and the sun. The W's on the side are a symbol for autocumulus clouds. Autocumulus clouds are also called a mackerel sky, referring to the secret society of the Royal Order of the Holy Mackerel. And it's been said in the Gravity Falls game on Disney Channel's website that Stan is in a secret society. Another interesting note, autocumulus clouds are often mistaken for UFOs because of their shape. Moving on, the arrow with two dots underneath it mean a powerful sacred ground which could indicate where the portal is located. The circle in the diamond actually doesn't exist as an alchemical symbol. However, the diamond means the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. And the circle symbolizes a door. Together, they could mean a door to the world or even all of space and time. And the fact that the sigil is perfectly symmetrical horizontally, it could be interpreted as two suns circling two skies and two grounds separated by space and time. Also, if you look at the first part of the tattoo, you can clearly draw a triangle around it, which looks an awfully lot like the portal. And if we look at the triangle, it points to the thing at the bottom of the tattoo. Now that last symbol actually isn't an alchemical symbol at all. It's a Native American symbol. The two arrows pointing at the circle means warding off of evil spirits. Possibly a triangular shaped top hat wearing spirit? Naturally, nothing has been confirmed in the show yet. Hopefully we'll learn more about it in the rest of season two. Robbie is a zombie. It's no secret that Robbie is pale, lethargic, angsty, and can basically always be found wearing eye makeup. But is this just because he's a teenager? Or is it because he's actually a zombie? The journal describes zombies as known for their pale skin and their bad attitude. These creatures are often mistaken for teenagers. That sure sounds a lot like Robbie to me. Not only that, but Mabel's boyfriend, whom Dipper mistakes for a zombie in the episode Tourist Trapped, has some very pale skin, swoopy bangs, and a black hoodie, much like Robbie does or really anyone that spends a lot of time at Hot Topic. However, Robbie looks nothing like the zombies that Dipper summons in the episode Scaryoki. So he's either got some really good makeup and a solid supply of brains to keep him sane, or he's just a regular teenage boy. But I guess we won't know for sure until he hears the three-part harmony from Taking Over Midnight. Gideon is immortal. Even though he ends up behind bars at the end of the first season, we all know that Gideon is definitely up to something fishy. Whether it was just to win Mabel over, get vengeance on Stan, or achieve ultimate power, this phony kid psychic pulled some straight up evil stunts way out of the range of any normal kid's ability. One explanation for this is that Gideon is a supernatural creature with immortal abilities. Gideon is the only kid in the show to have five fingers. The adults are the only other characters to have five fingers. He has very very mature language for a kid. He even refers to Grunkle Stan as Stanford. And in the episode Blendon's Game, when Dipper and Mabel go back into Seuss's childhood, they pass a billboard for Bud's Auto having a just had a baby sale. However, baby is crossed out and replaced with demon. Also, his parents never seem to refer to him as son, only by his name or boy. Initially, many people thought Gideon was a vampire because of this adorable comparison. However, that's been mostly debunked throughout the show, because Gideon can see his reflection and be out in the sunlight, things that not even Edward Cullen can do. But the immortal part still stands. We first meet Gideon in the episode, The Hand That Rocks Mabel, which is a play on the phrase, the hand that rocks the cradle, referring to a person dating someone much younger than them. So it could be that Gideon is bent on getting all of the journals just to get his vampire powers back. However, another theory states that maybe he wants the journals back because he was somehow involved with the Pines but somehow an incident with them turned him into a baby. This could all explain his knowledge of the supernatural plus his vendetta against the pines. Aliens and Gravity Falls. With all of the interdimensional portals and time travel, crazy creatures and zombies, it's not too hard to believe that Gravity Falls could also have been home to aliens. I mean, there are a lot of major clues that would indicate some extraterrestrial residents living in Gravity Falls. 
Number one being the giant UFO-shaped hole in the mountains above Gravity Falls, which is referred to in the journals as floating cliffs, with notes about gravitational anomalies and how they're not naturally occurring. But there are also several other references to UFOs hidden throughout the show. They can be seen in a Polaroid during the theme song as well as on the main title card in the corner. You can also see a magazine dedicated to UFO sightings and Grunkle Stan reading about a UFO sham in the Gravity Falls Gossiper. And the creepiest sign of all, the same UFOs from the theme song also show up on Bill Cipher in the episode Dreamscapers. And get this, there is even a UFO in the unaired pilot of Gravity Falls. So you just know that aliens have always been a crucial part of the Gravity Falls mystery. The portal was used before. Even though we were just introduced to the portal, there are already a ton of conspiracies involving its use. The biggest one being that the portal was used before the author, Stan's twin brother, fell in 30 years ago and was trapped. It's stated in the journal that the author built the portal in order to gain knowledge on the mysteries of Gravity Falls, but instead it brought destruction. As we all know, Bill exists in a different dimension, and the interdimensional portal may have been how he came to Gravity Falls in the first place, a time he refers to in the episode Dreamscapers. We now know that the portal was opened again when Stanford was caught in it. But it's possible that the portal was used by Ford many other times before this one. Maybe as an attempt to return Bill. As evident by the page in the journal we catch a glimpse of during Into the Bunker. Maybe depicting some interdimensional exploration or retrieval. So what could prove this? Well, there are quite a lot of other references referring to this supernatural incident that occurred 30 years ago. In Scaryoki, Agent Powers stated that they haven't seen readings like this for 30 years. And based on what McGucket said in Society of the Blind Eye, that he can't remember anything before 1982, it must mean that the portal was first opened that same year. Also in Society of the Blind Eye, we see a graph in McGucket's lab that indicates that the portal becomes more unstable as time passes. Perhaps the author may have used it many times before that day happened. And that's why Ford appeared so frantic when Stan finally saw him for the first time after 10 years. Well, I feel like I'm even more confused than when we started this video. How can one show have so many crazy mysteries? Well, it's a damn good show, that's how. Hopefully we covered some of your favorite Gravity Falls conspiracies and answered some of your questions. And if not, we hope you go find your own answers. And then of course come back and tell us. And while you're at it, let us know what you're looking forward to most in the rest of Season 2. Thank you so much to Chad for helping me with this episode. Make sure you guys check out his channel. He makes so many amazing videos, lots of them about Gravity Falls. If there are other Gravity Falls conspiracies that we didn't cover, please, please let us know in the comments. Make sure you guys subscribe to Channel Frederator and check out our Facebook page. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>